Hello everyone. So this is the 1993 Henry that you saw my refurb video of. And I said that I would do a final video of this machine. And uh, I've just finally got a chance at a spare few minutes to um, make a video. So here's the final look. So it's set up just as a regular cylinder cleaner at the minute with the combination floor tool. Here's a couple of bits that I've acquired. So I managed to get hold of a manual, an instruction manual, for the era of this particular Henry. This is the manual it would have come with originally. This covers Henry and Edward. It shows the optional turbo electric nozzle, which I will be showing you. It's not this style though, that's the 80s type. The one I've got is the 90s version. Um, but yeah, quite comprehensive little manual. Typical pneumatic do's and don'ts. So that's a fun little addition to have. These tools are generics, unfortunately. The tools were missing, of course. Like you'll find with any vintage Henry, or even more modern Henrys, the original tools tend to be missing. But these are the exact replica, replicas of the original. It's got the retro angular shape to them. There's your um, all-purpose nozzle or furniture nozzle. You've got this slide-on brush that can be attached to this. It just slides on. You can use that for stub and dirt. It's got quite um, dense, stiff bristles. You can use that in the car for something. You've got some stub and dirt to scrub out to remove. You've got the horsehair dusting brush. The bristles are a little bit shorter on this than what would have been the original, but it's the same style as the original. And the crevice tool, of course. And the adapter. So that's the small tool set, which is, again, not original or genuine, but it is almost identical to the genuine set. The floor tool, typical 80s, 90s pneumatic uh, combination floor tool with the lint picker on the back and you've got the brushes that come down for hard floors if you push down on the back pedal there. The bristles then come down for hard floors. Nice metal base plate. Now of course the the floor tool has seen the most use on this Henry. I've managed to, as I mentioned in the refurb video, use some shoe polish to disguise the scratches, which you can still see in the light. But in more ambient light, it looks in pretty good shape. And it's not broken or anything, so that's okay. I've got the original stainless steel ones, still with their little caps on them. And the original curved end with the um, suction regulator and the hose is original the shorter hose cuff the hose is about 2.4 meters transfer face now there's me looking awful but anyway um, the Henry lettering is in exceptional condition on this machine and it did polish up very well. There are some deep scratches and things, which is just from normal use, but overall, this Henry is in very good shape. If we come round to the back, you can see I've added a I Love Henry sticker on there, and very observant eyes will notice that the address is for Chard Somerset when this Henry was made in Beaminster, Dorset. So we do have very typical of earlier HVR 200s, the dual side exhausts, which I do prefer. 
it sort of diffuses the exhaust air a bit better. Got the original cable with the, I believe this is a Volex plug. Don't think it actually says on it. No, it doesn't, I don't think. It says Pencom, I think. Anyway, typical sort of plug that you would see on a pneumatic. This being um, pre-94, it doesn't have this stabiliser. It does have, and all older Henrys had this, the little moulding on the bottom of the bucket, which was there to sort of prevent tipping, but it doesn't really work that well. But yeah, this is sort of your typical older style pneumatic bucket with the uh, all black wheels. And you can see the wheels are in pretty good shape. You can still see the moulding there. So this hasn't had an awful lot of use, or at least it's been well looked after. Um, being a later 93 model, it has the, the newer type of switch rather than the old pneumatic switch. And this one's got the black lettering on it. Um, later that became white, I say lettering, white printing. And here we have the 100 watt, 240 volt power takeoff socket for a optional power nozzle. Um, they did away with this very early in 1999. Then they introduced a specific electric head model called the Henry Turbo Care, I believe. But yes, all standard. Henry's prior to 99 had this um, power takeoff socket. So the handle is in good shape. Often these are quite scratched, but this one's okay. Doesn't lock, of course, it's pre um, 2006, obviously. Um, later on, and Henry's certainly you can buy now, the handle locks in the upright position, but older ones didn't. Here's the rating sticker, made by Pneumatic International, Beaminster, Dorset, England. Model HVR200, 240 volts, 1000 watts max, 800 watts IEC. Input with electric nozzle, 900 watts total IEC. It's got the double insulated and BIAB approved marks. And um, I can't remember what this one stands for. There's a serial number, made in week 42 of 1993. So it will be 30 years old this year. So there we go. Cable rewind, of course, nice and smooth. As all older HBR 200 rewinds were. I do love the bold red Henry lettering on these older ones. I just think it looks really striking. Now everyone's seen inside here, but I might as well show it in there anyway. Um, we have the older style Permatex filter, which is, of course, thinner. Easier to clean, actually, than the newer ones, but doesn't filter as well. Although we do have HEPA flow bags in here. This is the same bag I fitted to it in the video. It's been used a fair bit um, since that um, restoration. You can use Henry's bagless, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's quite messy to empty and will um, decrease the efficiency and the life of the motor. Here's the underside. Classic two-stage motor in there. Old style casing. And of course, we have the black plastic bumper that runs around because, again, this was way before they introduced the rubber bumper. I'll pop the top back on, make sure his name is nice and straight, looks okay. And of course, unlike new ones, on these old ones you can put the top on any way you want, but um, I do like to make sure that it's central. Anyway, there we are, that's that, so we'll give a quick demo of it in its standard mode and then I'll show you the electric, turbo electric head. Now, according to the manual for this Henry, 
Pneumatic recommended that you just pull out the cable that you needed, plug it in, and as you use it, the cord will just unwind on its own. Never seen that before in a pneumatic manual, but anyway, they are usually uh, just pictures. So let's get this plugged in, and here we go. <laughs> So this is the pneumatic turbo electric head. This is, as I say, the 90s version. There were several versions that pneumatic released um, as optional power heads for Henry's and other pneumatic cleaners. This one was in like new condition when I got it. Um, it came in its original box actually, which is cool. And um, here's the cable. It's a long cable because of course you have to clip this to the hose and um, and this little plug here plugs into the power takeoff socket on the back of the machine. Just a two prong plug. Uh, the clips, uh, when new, uh, were in a separate bag and you have to attach them uh, to the cable, which I've already used this a few times, so it's already attached in my case. Um, the neck is straight on this one and it's in the center. Um, some versions, the neck was off to one side and even some versions of this particular uh, electric nozzle, um, the neck wasn't straight, it was sort of a pivot one, so you could, you know, pivot, pivot the head from side to side, but this one's just fixed. But uh, here it is. It, do, it will stand up straight on its own, um, providing the hose isn't providing too much top heaviness. See the nice turbo electric brand in there. I think this is probably a Vesselberg head, I imagine. It's got the pneumatic address on it. 
the Matic International Charge Somerset England. It's a model TE290 powerhead, 100 watts, 230 volts. It's got a decent brush roll on it. The bristles are quite uh, close together, relatively um, soft. They're not overly soft, but they're not very stiff either. Plenty of them though, and they're sort of chevron design, so all the dirt gets swept into the suction path, which of course is in the middle. Uh, belt is sort of in the centre. It takes a toothed belt, this one, so it should last for quite a while. Nice metal base plates here. Uh, strips on the bottom, metal strips. And a squeegee there. Some edge suction channels. And two small wheels at the front. And two rubber coated wheels at the back. I think, yeah, I think these are, I think they might just be plastic, those front ones. But anyway... Let's, uh, oh yeah, there's a bumper as well that runs all the way around, which is nice, some nice air vents. So yeah, let's see how this power head attaches to the standard Henry. So first of all, we need to attach the extension tube into the power head itself. And then this, there should be three clips for the wand. So one will go closer to the bottom. We'll have another one part of the way up. And another one can be attached to the curved portion of the handle. So there's three clips securing the cable to the ones. So you'll have four clips to secure the cable to the hose. These are the bigger clips. And it's up to you whether you want to wrap this around the hose or just clip it down the length of it. I just clip it down the length of it because it tends to, because the hose end swivels on the cuff end and at the machine end, the cord tends to get tangled anyway, so I don't wrap it round. So leave a little bit of slack, spread the clips and just push them on. Space them as evenly as you can, making sure that you do leave a little bit of slack that's the third one. And finally, the fourth one can go more towards the end of Henry's hose like that. And then you're going to want to turn Henry around, make sure the cable comes towards the left side of his face where the Y is on the Henry lettering. Make sure it's not trapped by the main cord of the machine. And then this just plugs into the power takeoff socket. It's just a push fit. You see why I said carry it to the left, so if you had it the other way, it'd be um, intruding on the on-off switch. But there we are. That is the power head set up and ready to go. So now when I turn the Henry on, the electric power nozzle will get its power from this power takeoff socket. And uh, I'll just turn it on so you can see the brush roll rotating. So here we are then. So I'll just push it round initially and then I'll show you um, it picking up some dirt.
So there we are then. I think that just about wraps up my overview and demonstration on this classic 1990s pneumatic Henry. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Uh, like if you enjoyed the video and uh, subscribe if you haven't already, because I will be uploading more videos in the future. Thanks very much for watching. Take care.